Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel, We're the Movie Couple. I'm Wendy. I'm Dustin. And in this video, we're going to get into the spoiler territory for Gen V. This is the boys spin-off series. Uh, it is premiering, it's already premiered actually, on Prime Video. Two episodes are out right now, and uh, actually the third episode is out as well. Yeah, it just dropped, uh, I think, either today or yesterday. Yes. And it, so we are a little behind on this, but we actually got to go to a screening to see episodes one and two, and we liked it so much that we're like, you know what? We want to talk about this. We want to be able to do our reactions to this show. And it's really cool because while we were in the theater, there were a lot of people there who are big fans of The Boys. And I've really liked what I've seen from The Boys, but I've not actually sat down and watched every single episode. I've watched a lot of clips, a lot of trailers, a lot of um, little scenes. It looks like an amazing show, and I really want to dive into it. But it's just the fact that they are now on season three. They're about ready to do season four of The Boys, and... Gen V seems like a really good place to kind of dive in, get introduced to the world, and then go back and see all of these cool Easter eggs that are put into Gen V. Yeah, I'll say this. I think the cool thing about Gen V is that it very much exists in the world of the boys, mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't, it's not one of those like you need the prerequisite of like the boys to understand what is going on. I will also say that it is extremely helpful if you have watched The Boys, like, um, people were like, I actually heard somebody coming out of the screening and they're like, why are they called Gen 5? I'm like, it's Gen, like they thought the V was a numerical oh, a number. Numer okay. Yeah, and I was like, it's V because of the V compound. That's what it's called, right? It's yeah. like the fact that we <laughs> actually haven't seen it, but at least we know enough to understand We've seen enough. that yeah. it's, yeah, from compound V. Yes. So, I mean, so we know a little bit about the story and being able to see these kids that have been injected with compound V when they were little babies, but their some the character that we were actually following is her powers didn't mature until a little bit later when she hit puberty essentially, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and she turns into a bloodbender. <laughs> yes, for all you Korra fans out there, there's a little or Airbender fan, fans, there's a little reference. So yeah, we're gonna be uh, just kind of talk, you know, spoilers included about what we liked. Uh, with episodes one and two, and then we're, like Dustin said, we're going to be a little late getting into, like, you know, episode three and probably four because we're, we got a lot of stuff going on. But we like the first two episodes so much that we, um, originally we weren't going to do reactions to it, but I think now we're, we're gonna because it is, re we're really, really liking it. Of course, it ties into the world of the boys, you know, having, like, various cameos from various characters mm -hmm. here and there. Um, so, but let's get into it. Marie is the uh, student that we are following. She, you know, got a full-ride scholarship to Godokan U University, and she wants to be the first black woman in the seven. Uh, unfortunately, she had a really tragic childhood where she unintentionally killed her parents yeah um because of her her ability and so she's got the the reoccurring nightmares actually i think i feel like the overall theme this is quite a few people have reoccurring nightmares because golden boy also does that is actually something in interesting that one. they do actually talk about in the episode uh, in the um in episode one is the fact that people who have compound v and have developed powers tend to have unstable minds. They start having mental problems. They start having breaks with reality. They start having um, uh, they, they're, they're having a hard time be able to, to tell the difference between reality and what is going on in their head. Knowing some of that from some of the scenes that I've seen in The Boys, I'm like, oh, okay, are they going to dive more into this? So far, they've only just mentioned it, but they introduced a lot of cool characters. They introduced Golden Boy. They introduced his girlfriend who's able to compulse people into doing yeah, what she's they... able to like manipulate them like she's kind of, like Jedi mind trick them essentially mm -hmm. they talk about Golden Boy's best friend who's actually able to who's like telepath not te uh, telekinesis mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it seems like he's pretty strong he's able to do some pretty cool thing with um different items I like how they are introducing the powers you know we have like Golden Boy like the it kind of goes with the name and sort of that like 
the popularity and the expectation and he is like the best of the best number one in the school mm-hmm. and everybody likes him wants to be him but there is so much more to go like i remember i thought when we first met him like kind of like a i didn't expect him to be such a multifaceted character um so i was starting to get into i was like oh wait okay i see what is happening and then it was like oh you starting to like golden boy sorry we're just gonna take him out of the show in a very gruesome manner i was not expecting that i thought he was just gonna like i don't know i i i did what i did i am sorry because he kept on saying i love you andre i'm sorry and then i thought he was gonna like i don't know go into hiding i didn't think he was gonna like explode himself yeah, you know, and that is something that they are very much keeping in line with um, the original series of The Boys, is that there are some really gruesome moments. Like, you know, chunks all over the place. Gruesome uh, moments. I, yeah, it's definitely a uh, rated mafia mature uh, kind of a show, just like The Boys. We even have Emma, a.k.a. Little Cricket, uh, and she, you know, had that night with... Um, somebody who she thought was genuinely like interested in her and you know and it turns out it was like some other like sick like fantasy fetish that he had um, but then also to like talking about all the characters have something more to what we are seeing on the surface like from episode one to episode two I felt like we jumped so far even with like Emma's power what she has to do for herself to yeah get small. I was like Whoa. The downside of all of these gifts. Yeah. And so, you know, how some of them can't really control it. Some of them have to do something kind of gross and disgusting in order to activate their powers. Some of them, anytime they turn on their powers, they burn off all of their clothes. <laughs> so that means you're walking around butt naked yes. trying to save you, be a superhero. You know, by the end of episode two, I mean, by episode one, I was hooked. But episode two left me feeling really intrigued about, like, what is the what is in the woods and what is it that the professor knew for Golden Boy to like literally kill him? Yeah, to torch him. Yes. I mean, I feel really bad for Marie who just constantly seems to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. She's like she knows on what a narrow board she has to walk in order to be like, I don't want to get in trouble. I just mm-hmm. want to keep my head down. I want to become the first black female member of the seven but when you really notice it too that was something that her father was passionate about was the fact that she he was so excited when a train the first black member of the seven came onto the screen so i feel like we're going to be digging more and more into her personality and why she and i love the fact that yeah they developed a little bit of that yeah in episode two but i feel like they're really going to expand upon it later on in the series yeah there's just so much about every single character that we've met so far you know andre and you know obviously his relationship with his dad Mm -hmm. uh we have jordan lee would love to dig a little bit more and i know we will to dig a little bit more into them because now i think marie had a chance to kind of help out jordan in telling the truth that jordan was the one that fought fought golden boy and let her get help her get away yeah when he was coming after her and and but marie was also like you know she's she has her own um motivations and and wants and needs and stuff like that and she like she didn't ask to like be there that night to have all of this and be expelled and to cover up their their like drug filled night or whatever. So and the fact that like, she I understand got blamed. Both sides. Yeah, yeah. She comes in, saves the day, so that person doesn't die um, by you know loss of blood, and she's the one that gets blamed for everything and how everything just happened to get swept under the rug because Golden Boy snapped. Yeah, and it's just that I feel like. They're doing this on purpose, the way that they just slowly build more and more tension and more tension and more tension. I feel like it's going to be nuts by the end of this series. Yeah. And another person I really want to know more about, too, she's not a student. It's Indira. She's like the therapist, Mm. psychologist. Dean. We actually don't really know exactly what she's up to. We just know that she's not a good guy, that she's the one who's been dealing a little bit with and keeping in charge of the forest. The woods. The woods. (laughs) The forest. The woods. That, too. But... I just, one, I like the when they have mysteries like this yeah. in TV shows. You know, that's one of the things that I loved about Stranger Things, about, you know, what's going on, what's this whole um, 
you know, secret um, scientific experiment that they're doing on all these kids. So it makes it so you're glued to this TV screen and always coming back for more. Yeah. And then, of course, um, kind of going back to um, episode one, I like that they knew the audience. Yes, like they clearly this is for like if you like the boys you're probably going to tune into the show but also they're a bit younger they're college aged so like the entire premise of everything it like brought me right back to like my freshman year immediately i was i mean obviously there's no you know super powered people running around my campus but but it kind of brought me back to like the pressure of like you know like day one of not just like high school but college and and trying to figure that out and like roommates and going out and do you fit in or do you do you do you just want to do your own thing you just want to focus on school or do you actually want to have a social life right and how do you juggle both and and plus the fact then you take all of that and throw in superpowers Superpowers and and i have to admit there are some superpowers that are very obvious you know you know the fact that you have an invisible um what is ra RA, yeah the ra the invisible RA, and they were talking about, now don't forget to go to the consent thing, and, or the consent seminar, and he's like, yeah, you're talking about consent when you're standing there naked. So overall, I really enjoyed episodes one, episodes two. I love the pacing. I feel like, um, you know, the the writing to me is, 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 is really solid. Mm-hmm. Like, they gave enough for each character for you to be like, okay, so there's something more to, to be... Um, to learn about this character, but you're going to let it happen naturally. Um, I just can't wait to see what's going to happen. Because sometimes the show gets so, like, tunnel vision on one single character, like their lead character, they kind of leave out the others and they don't develop develop them. But, like, by episode two, I'm like, oh, but what about this person, this person, this person? It really does seem like an ensemble cast. And, yeah, I really want to see more of Emma's character start to develop a little, for her to grow a little bit more. yeah. But I like where she's going. I like where these characters are going. And it just seems like it's going to be a good, entertaining show. So with that said, that is kind of wraps up our overall thoughts with spoilers uh, on episodes one and two of Gen V. We will get to reacting to episode three, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, And speaking of reaction videos, we have Loki coming up very very soon so make sure you stay tuned for that as well so if you haven't already subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos coming up from us and of course let us know your thoughts on uh just the first two if you're going to comment just the first two episodes of um the boys don't do episode three in the comments if if you can because we haven't watched it yeah we don't um, want anything to be spoiled if we're yeah. going to be doing and we have reactions. to read the comments so because we want to interact with you guys so yeah let us know your thoughts on episodes one and two and that is it from us for now thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one. Bye.